What it is, guys, your boy, Alan with another episode of Analyzing, and today we have the NFL midseason review, weeks one through 12. All right, so we're going to start off with that, man. Just like the name implies, just like the name implies, going midseason, I'm going through all the picks that I had, you know, like of offensive player of the year, Super Bowl winners. We're going to see how they stack up right now in the midseason, and then do something different. I'm going to go over all the teams in two or less sentences. I'm going to try to describe what I feel about your team, all the NFL teams, this through the midseason. All right, but let's start off with my picks that I had, okay? Starting with the Super Bowl winners, as I picked my San Francisco 49ers to win it all. So, through 12 weeks, the Niners, we are not looking so good, okay? We're 5-6 and six right now. The season has been up and down. We've been inconsistent. The team has regressed from last year with a bunch of injuries. We have a plague of injuries uh, just recently versus the loss that we had versus the Packers. We had Purdy out, Bosa out, Traverius Ward out, Trent was out. Um, Ayuk's obviously been out for his... When he tore his ACL, um, this has been up. And then McCaffrey just got back. So there's been a bunch of injuries. And that's what we've been battling this whole year, right? But it's crazy, though, because the offense is we're top five in total yards. I think we're four. And Purdy has been carrying the whole season. Purdy has been carrying the offense with his passing and scrambling ability. Uh, our Achilles heel this year, though, has been the red zone last year. We're number one in the NFL at 68%. This year, we are 25th at 50%. So, a stupendous drop, a stupidous drop-off, as like my boy Shannon Sharp would like to say. That's how big of a drop-off it's been. Uh, I think a huge part of it, of why we've been struggling in the end zone, is McCaffrey being out for the first part of the season. And now that he's come back, he's still not 100%. So, it's just not there. But I think he's a big factor on why we were scoring in the red zone last year, he had like 14 touchdowns. So I think he's been a huge part and he's not 100% coming back. So we'll see. We'll see if we improve going on through the season. Uh, the defense and the special teams have been the weak point in our team, especially the special teams. Just a, a miss with Sorensen as a defensive coordinator and Schneider as a special teams coordinator. So it's just been a miss. And man, this year, and you have to blame it on this guy. Kyle Shanahan, a lot this year, a lot of Niner fans have called for Kyle Shanahan's job. And I think they're crazy. Okay, I think they're crazy. And I did a poll on my Instagram follow it at Alan Ising, if you haven't already. I did a poll to see what the Niner fans should we fire him or not. And a hundred percent of them said no. So the Niner fans that you know I follow me or were with me, they say no. And I'm hundred percent with them, bro. All the Niner fans that I think we should fire, they're crazy. They're crazy. Like, I get some people's uh, opinions or some people's thoughts about it. They're saying, like, he's cost us the Super Bowl last year versus the Chiefs. This year, not as good. And I understand that. I understand that. And they, and they missed some draft picks. I get that. I get that. But listen, in totality, as I said, this has been the worst, his worst, Kyle Shanahan's, his worst head coach season so far. And like I said, he is to blame for a lot this season. The bad coaching in general, his picks, his defensive coordinator, special teams coordinator, a miss. However, though, one bad season does not take away an abundance of great seasons. And it doesn't, man. Only way that he's getting fired for me, like in my opinion, was that he would have to lose every game the rest of this season. And then for this losing or this type of performances to continue on to the next season. That it continues on to the next season. And I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think it's going to happen. And since I don't think it's going to happen, I ain't firing him. There's just no way, bro. Like, if they were to fire him right now, you know how many teams would chomp at the bit to try to get him? Like, he's like, no, no, no. He's one of the best play callers, if not the best play caller. With Andy Reid up there in the NFL, we're going to fire him. And then, like, the whole team is constructed of him. Like, yeah, he's missed a lot of draft. He's missed on some draft picks. But he's, they've, him and John Lynch have hit on a lot of draft picks. 
Like, our team is literally constructed of their draft picks. Who do you think drafted Kittle? Who drafted Fred Warner? Who drafted Nick Bosa? Who got Trent Williams to the Niners? Cal Shanahan. So let's just pump the brakes on there a little bit. And let's give him, let's give him, I'm going to give him this season. And if it's continue on his next season, I get why his, the coaching, the hot seat. He would be on the hot seat. But right now, no way, man. Kyle Shanahan stays on the job. He's there. He's there. I, mean, I don't know, man. I think, I know the NFL is a, what have you done for me lately, league? You got to update your resume. But this happens in sports a lot where people are so quick to forget. They're so quick to forget, man. The moment you start losing, bro, get out of here. You're done. You're trash. Like, you're just going to forget the whole seasons he's made us irrelevant. You're just going to throw it out the window. Not me, man. I'm a loyal guy, and I'm staying with Kyle. I'm staying with Kyle till the wheels fall off. I got you, bro. But overall, uh, I don't believe in my Super Bowl pick this year uh, from a reporter slash analyst unbiased perspective. Niners are not, if I, you know, if I take off my Niner bias hat, Niners are not Super Bowl level contenders this year. I don't see us making a run. Uh, the playoffs is achievable, especially in our division where everyone's six and five or five and six. So we could probably win our division and get into the playoffs, but I don't think it's going to be a Super Bowl run. We're probably farthest we'll go is probably divisional. And then I think this year, I think yeah, this year divisional, and that's probably it, but. Sad, sad, but I think just for this year until we get better, you know, so it is what it is, man, it is what it is. But I hope we can start getting better, you know, hope we actually start improving throughout the season. So we'll, but we'll see, we'll see. Runners up, right? I had, Super, I had the Baltimore Ravens in the Super Bowl this year, and they look pretty good, okay? They just beat uh, LAC, the Chargers, to move on to 8-4. and four. Uh, this whole season, they've been a top three AFC team, top five in the NFL most of the time. After two early losses to the Chiefs and the Raiders, they went on a five-game winning streak. And I thought this time, when they were on that five-game winning streak, that this was the team to beat uh, the Chiefs. With Henry in the mix, him having him being the second leading rusher right now, uh, Lamar having his best year in the NFL, finally proving his downfield accuracy and the defense being number two versus the run. I thought this is the time. This is the time for the Ravens. However, they have two major flaws. First, they're the most penalized team in the NFL with 101 penalties. And their pass defense is dead last in total passing yards given up. I believe these two things are pretty detrimental for Super Bowl hopeful. Like you have to be not the most penalized team. Like you guys gotta be bottom. You gotta be top you gotta be top fifteen at least in least penalties. Okay. And then this is a passing league. So being dead last in passing defense, they have to improve. They have to at least be in the middle, right? So that's what I was saying. They, they have to. If they clean up the penalties, like I was saying, clean up the penalties and at least become middle of the pack in passing defense, they, appro- they improve that to at least middle of the pack. I believe this can be the year for the Ravens. Lamar passes KC and makes the Super Bowl, brings down Monkey off. I don't know if he'll win, especially versus the, like, the goal against the Lions. But he gets to the Super Bowl and he takes that Monkey off his back. So my my... My prediction looks pretty good. Looks it looks pretty good right now. Uh, for MVP right this year, I predicted Joe Burrow. And how can I say this? Because he is having an MVP season, like he is, but he won't win it because the teams, the team specifically, the Bengals defense has been horrible, like horrible, man. Joe individually, he is top three in passing yards. He is tied first with Lamar at passing touchdowns with 27 touchdowns. And he only has four interceptions with a 75.6 QBR and a 106.9 passer rating. So he's been electric. Like he's been very good. He's been great. 
The team, however, is four and seven, and the defense ranks bottom six in points given up. So it sucks for Joe. Like no winning season, no MVP. Uh, but the MVP considerations so far the midseason has been Lamar, obviously, uh, Jared Goff. This has been Lamar's like best season like i previously said like it's been the best season i wouldn't even say like mvp thing because they already won the two mvps but this has been his best season in the nfl so he's the legitimate shot at the mvp uh jared goff is in there for the lions saquon especially if he gets if he especially breaks the 2000 105 uh rushing yard mark set by eric dickerson in 1984 uh henry's having a great season josh allen so those are the top five guys in consideration for the MVP. Uh, offensive player of the year, Amon Ross, Sam Brown, I had, I had him winning. Uh, he's not having the season I thought he would have individually. He is eight in receiving yards, which is not bad at all. And he has nine touchdowns, which is second most uh, for receivers. But these are not offensive player of the year numbers, especially this year when you got Chase being number one right now with a thousand something and then he has 12 touchdowns and Henry and Saquon, like I previously mentioned, they're doing their things. They're one and two right now in rushing yards, doing the most for their teams. So I don't think he's going to win offensive player of the year, but he's having a great season with the Lions. So give him props for that. Uh, defense player of the year had Max Crosby and I was going big splash. Okay, I was going something, you know, I was reaching for the, I was reaching, I was aiming what was I doing? I was aiming for the for the stars, and I landed on, like, the moon, you know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. But I was going big splash, and uh, I'm failing. You know, he's basically, he failed me. He failed me right now, and it's kind of disappointing. But Max is uh, 22nd. He ranks 22nd in sacks with 6.5, which is not bad. But, again, far from defensive player of the year. And he's on the way, Raiders, which brings him down. Way down, especially right now. But Raiders, not good. Uh, the defensive player considerations, though, have been T.J. Waugh, Zaire Franklin, uh, Hendrickson, who's been, like, the top of the leaderboard in sacks is 11, uh, and Dexter Lawrence, Sexy Dexy. Uh, offensive Rookie of the Year, I picked Marvin Harrison Jr. So far, he has 546 yards, which is okay, but he's not even the number one option in his team. That's McBride. He has more targets and more yards, uh, so much less considered to be offensive rookie of the year uh the ones that have been in it in the discussion have been Jaden daniels and bo nix both been doing pretty good for their teams for the commanders and the broncos respectively uh defensive rookie of the year had dallas turner he has one sack he's part of a good defense in the vikings defense they have a good front line with van ginkle and grenard but not the numbers or the contribution to win this award the other ones in consideration for Defense Rookie of the Year are Jared Verse from the Rams, Quinion Mitchell from the Eagles, and Terry on Arnold from the Lions. Comeback Player of the Year, I picked Aaron Rodgers, and he's failed me the most. Like I said, Max Crosby failed me. Aaron Rodgers slapped me in the face and threw me in a ditch. That's what Aaron Rodgers did to me, okay? He has regressed from his MVP self, middle-of-the-pack stats, middle-of-the-pack passing yards, 51 QBR, 88.9 passer rating. Uh, he, his stats, like I'm saying, the stats are middle-of-the-pack, right? But they're not awful. But the Jets just needed more. They need more. He can't carry an offense no more. And what makes it sad is that he has good weapons, bro. They brought Devontae. Garrett Wilson's a good receiver. Uh, I like the running backs. Obviously, the two running backs, Brees Hall and, oh, my God, the rookie, Bray, uh, Bray, Brayan Allen. Braylon Allen, yeah, I'm pretty sure. The rookie is like 20. They're good. And he's they brought all the people he's wanted. They brought Alan Lazar, Randall Cobb, and, like, he just, and they're still garbage. Like, the offense is still not good at three and eight. Uh, rumors are he might get cut by the Jets. Reports by Dion, De Diana Rossini. And, you know, the reports is that he wanted to, to come back and play, but not with the Jets. 
though he came out on Tuesday, this Tuesday, as I'm recording this now, the day, yeah, he went on the Pat McAfee show on his daily, I mean, not his daily, his weekly Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, saying that none of that is true. That what she said about that he wants to play for the, that he, did, that he wants to play, but he doesn't want to play for the Jets. Like, none of that is true. And that he doesn't even know. He went as far as to say that he doesn't even know if he wants to play yet next year. And if he does want to play this year, the Jets are his number one option. So he said complete opposite uh, of what Rusini said in her report. So I'm going to take what he said at face value. Okay, I'm going to believe him because he's him. Like, you're going to trust the source. The source is him. So, okay. He says he doesn't want to. He says he doesn't even know if he's going to play and then he wants to play with the Jets. Okay. But he's doing the same thing. That's my criticism about him, though. He's doing the same thing that that got him removed from Green Bay. The, I don't know if I'm going to play yet. Like, bro, he's in and out. You can't be fully present if every year you're thinking, am I playing this year? Am I not? Do I feel like it? Do I not? Like, that's not fair to an organization. That's not fair to you. And that's mostly not fair. Your teammates, bro. Like, your teammates. You can't. That's not giving the respect they deserve if you're going to be there for them or not. So I don't like that, okay? Like, make up your mind, A-Rod. I say this as a supporter. I like him. I think it's great that he speaks his mind. He has other opinions other than football. Like, contrary to other people believe, they always tell him to shut up and, you know, because they don't agree with him. I agree with him on a lot of stuff, especially the vaccine. Okay, we're not going to get into that specifically, but I agree with a lot of stuff he says. A lot of stuff I don't because that's we humans are. We agree on things and we don't. Just because I don't agree with him on things doesn't mean he should shut up and not talk about the topics. Okay? That is my opinion. But, you know, but what I am saying and what I do criticize him and give him this is that the, if the other stuff that you talk about is more important than football right now or at this point, just leave the game, my guy. Just leave the game then and focus on your other things. And that's my advice to you. My Aaron Rodgers ever hear this? Probably not. Maybe later, but that's what I would tell Aaron Rodgers if he ever asked me. Now let's go on to coach of the year, right? So I had D'Amico Ryans for the Texans. The Texans are 7-5, and five, so they're, he's still in the running. Uh, lately, they've dropped some games and some fans have turned on them. CJ and, and Bobby Slowick uh, have been not great. They've turned on him. Actually, they turned on all three of them. But I think they need to chill, man. The Houston fans need to chill. Like, they still have a winning record. It's barely the second season with all of them. They're, they weren't Super Bowl contenders, so I don't know what you expect from them. And they still have time. They still have time to adjust things, bro. This is the second half of the season. It's probably going to be the second half of the season. He still has a chance. I still believe what's going on. In Houston, so the other coach coach of the year considerations: Dan Campbell, Andy Reid, Mike Tomlin, but D'Amico's still in it. He's still in it. Super. All right, that sounds all that glitch, right? Super Bowl contenders. Now I have five teams who I think can win the Super Bowl this year. At one, we had the Ravens. Actually, no, I didn't rank them. I just put them. But anyways. So one of them have so the five teams that I have is the Ravens. I already talked about them and all their stuff. Go back and listen. If you didn't pay swiftly attention, you could go back and listen to that. Uh, Kansas City Chiefs, obviously, they are 10 and 1, but they look beatable. They hang around a lot. They never finish off teams. The defense is great. They're in their top five defense. But these two weeks versus the Bills and Carolina, they've been really shaky, loud, allowed more than 30 points. I believe it also against the Bills. Or, but they allowed more than 25 for sure. A lot of 25 for sure. So they've been really shaky. The offense, though, they have Mahomes and weapons. So obviously it's good. But the tackles, they're also shaky. I don't trust them. I'm literally 50 50 with them because they are beatable, but they never get beaten. Mahomes always seems to find a way to get something out of his ass. Like, oh, no, he always finds a game-winning drive. But these last two years, man, they haven't been a great offensive team. The defense has carried them. And the team's better. They better catch him now. 
The other teams, the Ravens, the Lions, like they better catch them. The Bills, they better catch them now. That they're not at their apex. But I have them here. I still have them as Super Bowl contenders because they're the Chiefs. They somehow still win games. So you got to have them up there. They're trying to get that three P. Probably the first team to ever three P the Super Bowl. So they got to be up there. But one of my other teams that I have is the Lions, the Super Bowl contenders. Okay, they're 10 and 1, best team in the NFL right now. Uh, they have the number two ranked offense with Gob, with Goff, Jameer Gibbs, and Montgomery, Knuckles, Sonic and Knuckles. Uh, they have a great O line with Penny Soul and Dicker and all you know, all those guys. Um, obviously, and I'm on Ross St. Brown, like just a great offense. And uh, what's his name? TJ Hawkins. No, wait, not that. Not TJ Hawkins. They got traded. Uh, the other tight end, Sam Laporta. Sam Laporta's and defense is stout. You got the DBs. You got Kerry Joseph and Branch. They're top five. Both of them are top five in picks. The special, the special teams is sound. They're the most complete team in the NFL. They blow teams out. They win close games. They win versus they win games they're not supposed to win, like the one against the Texans or Goff through five interceptions. They still won the game. They have a real chance of winning their first ever Super Bowl. And as a Niners fan, you know, it's kind of embarrassing because we have spent years trying to get better. And we've had opportunities and we haven't won it. So if the Lions win it, that'd be kind of embarrassing. But as an NFL fan, how could you not root for the Lions, bro? Like their first ever Super Bowl. The team is likable. Like Dan Campbell's likable. The team is pretty humble for being 10 and 1. Cause they know, like, they haven't achieved anything. They're Lions. So even being this good is like an accomplishment. So I'm pulling for them this year. I hope they have the team to win this year. And if I didn't want any other team than the Niners to win the Super Bowl, it would be the Detroit Lions. So come on, Lions. I'm pulling for y'all. Pulling for y'all. The Bills. I have also the Bills as a Super Bowl contender. They're 9-2, and two, top three AFC team. So Josh Allen is in MVP form. He only has five picks this year. He cut the turnovers, and he's carried the offense without a certified number one receiver. And I think that's their biggest flaw right now, the biggest flaw question mark, slash question mark right now that they have. Uh, the Bills defense has 10, 21 takeaways. Second in the league. I think this team overall is uh, underrated. They're falling under the radar for most people. But I wouldn't be surprised if they actually beat the Chiefs because they beat them in the regular season. Josh, I believe now, is 4-1 and one versus the Chiefs versus Mahomes in the regular season. But 0-3 oh, in the playoffs. So, you know, but like I said, Chiefs are beatable this year. And I believe Baltimore and Buffalo have the biggest windows and they got to do it. They got to knock them out this year. Or I don't know when they'll do it. But they have to this year. This year is the year that the Chiefs are beatable. So they got to do it. They got to go and do it. The Eagles, as my last Super Bowl contender team, I picked them. Philadelphia Eagles are 9-2. and two, Second best team in the NFC. Uh, Saquon is the leading the NFL in rushing with 1,392. He has boosted this team. Uh, the, the Eagles, the offense is better to a better level, uh, better than, than probably the 2022 team. So Saquon has boosted this offense. The defense is number one in the NFL with uh, Jalen Carter, Brandon Graham, which just tore his biceps, uh, triceps in the game versus the Rams. So praise up for him. Hope he recovers quickly. Uh, Millen Williams, Jordan Davis, Josh Sweat. Zach, the linebacker, the rookie Mitchell, and the new defensive coordinator, Vic Fangio. So the defense is great. Uh, to me, it's looking like a collision course for the NFC Championship. Lions, Eagles, I think that's going to be the NFC Championship game this year. Rest of the teams, okay? Now we're finished on the Super Bowl contenders, and we're going on the rest of the teams in the NFL in two sentences or less. Starting in the NFC Going by division, starting off in the NFC West. Niners, already talked about them. L.A. Rams, they're 5-6. and six. They've been inconsistent like us. Uh, injuries have plagued them, you know. Uh, they could be a playoff team, but this team is up and down. Puka and Cup, they're not 100%. So I don't really trust 
the Rams of Seattle. They're 6-5 and five NFC West leaders right now. They're a meh team, like middle of the pack team. They have some talent with Kenneth Walker and DK Metcalf and some DBs like uh, my boy uh, Devion Weatherspoon and uh, 27, Tyreek Woolen. Like that's the talent they have. And Geno is top three. In passing yards, but I just don't fancy Seattle, and literally taking my own bias away from him. Like I don't, I don't see them making a, a playoff push that far. They'll probably get in the playoffs, but not, not like anything deep or anything. Uh, Arizona, they're six and five. Another mad team, up and down. You know, I thought Kyler and Harrison would click better, but they've improved this year as overall as a team. They've improved this year in Gannon's second year. The New York Giants, they're two and nine. They're the worst team in the NFL right now, in my opinion. They're a real shit show with Daniel Jones being cut after they paid him that multi-contract and then let go of Saquon to keep Daniel Jones. It looks like a complete mess over there. And then, you know, they had him, before they cut him, they had him benched in QB4, and he was playing scout team safety. Like, it was, it was just embarrassing for the Giants. And then the defense was good for a while, but then they fell. It's just horrible for them. It's just horrible for them, and. Complete shit show over there with the Giants. Uh, Dallas, they're four and seven. Jerry Jones is the biggest problem. And as long as he doesn't change, or he doesn't leave the Cowboys and sell them, or he doesn't give power to anybody else, nothing is gonna change. And Dallas is gonna remain trash. So, which makes me elated as a Cowboys hater. That's great. Dallas complete shit show as well. A uh, Washington, they're seven and five. Massive, massive. Massive improvement with uh, Quinn Dan Quinn as the head coach and Jaden Daniels leading them. They have their bum- they have had their bumps during the season, but first it's their first year. Very young. There's optimism for the Commanders. Green Bay, they're eight and three. The NFC North is stacked, and they're th- third in the, their division with that record. That sucks for them, but they've been good. Okay. Um, Jordan Love, he needs to cut down on his interceptions. He has 11, which is second most in the NFL. Uh, Jacobs, big. Josh Jacobs, big free agent signing. He's third in rushing yards. He's leading a great way for them. He's been proven to be a great signing for them. Uh, Minnesota, 9-2. and two, A reason why Green Bay is second. Lowell, they could make a run, a deep playoff run, but... I don't think so. I don't think as Super Bowl contenders. They can make a deep playoff run, but I don't think they're Super Bowl contenders because of Darnold. Like, though Darnold has been good this year, I just don't trust them. And I think the Lions and Eagles are better than them. Chicago, they're 4-7. and seven. They started off not bad, but they've fallen these past two weeks. They fired their old offensive coordinator, Shane Waldron, and with Thomas Brown, now their offensive coordinator, Caleb Williams, has looked better. Number one pick. And let's see how this continues. The Falcons, uh, they're 6-5. and five. They've underperformed, in my opinion. The talent that this team has should be way... They should have way more games above 500. They should be way more games than 500, above 500. But since they play in the NFC South, and they are number one in the division right now, they get a pass. Probably first-round exit, though. I'll be a first round next when they make it to the playoffs. Uh, Tampa Bay, they're five and six. They start off well. Injuries have plagued them uh, offensively. You know, Godwin got her for the year. Chris, I'm mean Chris Evans. Uh, Mike Evans. I don't know if he's out for the whole season, but he's been out. And they win every now and then, but I think the Atlanta's better, so they're probably not making the playoffs. Uh, Carolina, three and eight. They started as the worst team in the NFL. Uh, they benched Bryce Young. Now he's back, and they've looked better. Okay, they went toe to toe with Kansas City last week. Good for them. I told y'all Bryce wasn't the main problem. The team is just not good, so he can't overcome all the deficiencies they have. But he's looked better. He's improved his confidence. So they just need to get better talent around the guy, and maybe Carolina can improve next year. So we'll see. We'll see. Uh, New Orleans. They're four and seven. I'm old enough to remember when they started two and zero, oh, and they were sleepers. Now they just sleeping. Like Carr got injured in the Kansas City game, 
and he recently came back, but he has made more noise off the field about his old teammates, Cough Cough Mike Thomas, talking about him than actual on-field performances. So, New Orleans, they just fell off a cliff. They just, oh, and they fired. Uh, they fired their coach, Dennis Allen. I forgot who the new replacement is, but fired him. And they still are not that good. They had a bye week just last week, but we'll see. Uh, and moving on now to the AFC. We start off in the AFC North with the Steelers. They're 8-3. Uh, I think they're a good playoff team. Not Super Bowl contenders, in my opinion, because they don't have that extraordinary talent compared to the other teams. Like Russell Wilson, he's been better. He played better. He's been better these two last seasons after having that horrific season in 2022 with the the Broncos, but he's been improving, but I just don't see it. Like, George Pickens is good, don't get me wrong, but I don't see that type of offense to compete with the Ravens. I mean, they beat them, but it's a division game. But I still don't think they're good enough be with the Bills and the Chiefs. So I, I think those three teams would beat them. So not, not with the Steelers. Uh, the defense is good, but low key, I think Tomlin sometimes undermines himself, like by not giving himself the best talent. But well, we move on. We move on. Cleveland, three and eight. Watson was horrendous at the start when he was a starter. When he's a starter, uh, he tore his Achilles. Jameis Winston has been the starter, and it's kind of been the same. Like they they beat the Steelers, but it was a one off game. So and Cleveland, they're still bad. Uh, Cincinnati, four and seven. Like I basically was talking about Joe earlier. The team is Joe and the offense. They've been spectacular, but they have slow starts. The defense is Garbo, and they can't finish close games. So that's why they're 4-7. and seven. Uh, Tennessee, they're the opposite of Cincinnati. The defense is great. They're number two in the NFL. But Will Levis, huge problem, has nine interceptions, and he's up there with the most turnovers in the NFL. That's why they're 3-8. and eight. Jacksonville, they're 2-9 and nine behind Giants as the worst team in the NFL. They can't do anything right. D-Law has been injured for some games. Not surprised if Peterson gets fired in the upcoming weeks. The Colts, they're 5-7. and seven. They benched uh, Anthony Richardson for a, a while back. Flacco came in, won them some games, and then he came back to earth now. So now AR is the starter again. He beat the Jets. He lost versus the Lions, which is, I mean, losing against the Lions is not a sin. You know, that's, that's the Lions. Uh, Andy, they're just a weird team. They're a weird team for some reason. Like, you know, Zaire Franklin is the bright spot. He's a top tackler in the NFL with 123 total tackles. But they're on and off. And, like, they're kind of irrelevant. I don't want to hate, but they're kind of relevant at times. Like, dude, there's kind of the team you forget exists. Sorry, Colts. But that's just because it's like they're not that bad to be the team that's like this team sucks. And everyone just clowns on them because they suck. But they're not good either. So, <laughs> they're like, I don't know. I don't know. Like, Sorry, Indy. Sorry. Uh, Houston, they're 7-5. and five. They've been on and off. CJ, not like last year. He hasn't performed like last year, but he is top four in passing yards with his weapons being out at different points, like Stephon Diggs out for the season. Uh, Nico Collins got hurt for some games. Tank Dell sometimes on and off, but they're still number one in the division, so I wouldn't panic. Uh, New England, 3-9. and nine. Gerard Mayo, the new coach, started off with Brissett, quarterback, and then they switched to Drake May. He, he has showed flashes, and they're a project team, so they got some optimism. On Miami, 5-6, and six, Tua went down versus the Bills. Everybody wanted to retire with that nasty concussion. He's had a lot of concussions now. Uh, the Finns, they went 1-3 and three in those four games that he missed. They're 3-2 and two since he came back. Finns are better with Tua, so... I don't think he's probably going to retire, and they want to keep him on the squad since they signed him new, they gave him a new contract. So we'll see how they continue on through the season. The Jets, another New York. I mean, they're they're three and eight. Yes, yes, the Jets are three and eight. Another New York shit show. As I said, a rod not good this year. The defense has regressed. Uh, they fired Sala. They fired and the general manager Douglas bunch of reports of Woody Johnson fidgeting with the organization now and he's like going into full panic mode because he wanted the Jets to be good or whatever so shit's hell over there I don't know what's going on with the Jets the Raiders two and nine worse than I expected I thought they would be nine and eight this year 
you know, somewhere around that. But Minshew has been worse than I thought. O'Connell has not been good either. But the biggest disappointment, I think, has been Antonio Pierce. I thought he would have improved the team significantly, but he's not living up to the bill. Not living up to last year when he got good as the interim head coach. The Raiders look like they've not improved at all. Uh, the Chargers, they're 7-4. and four. Harbaugh has improved the team to a playoff team. Like I said, he'd be better than Brandon Staley. All around, the team has improved. The offense, special teams, especially the defense. Last year, they were the last ones in the NFL. This year, they're near the top 10. So, he's improving the team. Denver, the last team, the Denver Broncos. They're 7-5. and five. They have improved in Champagne's second year. Bo Nix is in contention for Offensive Rookie of the Year. And the defense is number three. Total ranked defense, number three in the NFL. I think they will be the seventh AFC playoff team this year. Since Thursday teams are not as good. I think the Broncos can slip in there. And that was the end of the episode, guys. Hope you all enjoyed it. Let me know what I said about your team. Do you agree with what I said about your team or not? Let me know. DM me. Send me in the comments. See you all in the next one.